Good morning, Rabbi Boisai. Today's share is sponsored by Paris Achoydish. Shmuli Echt, in honor of David Zlatnik. F36. F36, very nice. Akiva Salkowitz. F3574. And Shalom Rand. 202. F202. The Vidowitz. Shmuli the Vidowitz. B202. Very nice. And the official 8 Minute Daf Yoimi Committee. By Vlad Zakharov, before she for my grandmother, Nahama Bat Heiko, by Avi Goldstein, on the 26th yard side of my mother in law, Martha Schwartz, Golda Rickel, Bas Rip Chaim, Shabbat Shalom, and Aliyah, before she Osher Ben Rochel Ross, from his children. Osher Ben Rochel Ross, Shabbat Shalom, before she Weinberg family, Rufus, and Yeshua, for Yisrael, Yoyno Ben Chaya, Zarna. And Liuli Nishmas Rus Leo Baz David. By Elchanan Pressman. In honor of my wife's birthday today. She thinks it's a big birthday. Not sure why. And of course, in honor of Jay Spector, who brought me here, Brochus Daf Dalid. I met your son in Shul in Ramad Eshkol. Elchanan, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> Boisai, Mazel Tov to everybody who's here. It's a big, big day. Shechiyonu, Vikiyimonu, Vigiyonu Lazman Azeh. It's the final daf of Masechta's Beitzo. And tomorrow, we start a brand new Masechta. It's only 30 daf. To conquer Masechta for one month. I want to make a, a very big announcement. And I need the Oilam to be enthusiastic about this announcement and join me. But I'm not going to say it now. We'll wait until a little later into the year. Hopefully I remember then. So keep tuned. Boisai, what we have here, if you weren't here last night or you didn't see last night's cheer, we have something I'm very jealous of and hopefully one day I get my hands on one of these. This is the limited edition special, Merkaz Daf Yoimi, limited edition, Art School Gemara. It's, it's a beauty. It's a beauty. I gave some of them out yesterday. Hillel Kamiansky was the first one to get one because I promised he'll be the first and he's on his way to the airport. So he drove by here, he picked it up and ran. Who else in this room deserves one of these? Brought somebody in and... Huh? Anybody? Here, David Feinberg, come. You can come, come here, come here. Get into the screenshot. Get over here, come. You come here also. Akiva Sawe, get over here. Who else? Shkoyach David, who did you bring? Shalom Aleichem, you get one of these. Akiva, you brought your grandfather, right? Yeah. And two cousins. Yeah. Beautiful. Shkoyach. How about you? Who? Mayor Solomon from Alon Shvut. Mayor Solomon from Alon Shvut. Welcome. All right. Here is the list of the new guys, the guys from the Shir that brought people, and I didn't read their names. And I'm, I don't intend to do that today. Maybe if Yosef has time, we'll put it on the screen somehow. It'll be like all share long. Keep tuned till after the share, 10 minutes after the share. There's a lot of names here. Yeah, we'll do it on fast speed. So first of all, I want to say a grace, a grace, to official from official catering. He sponsored every single one of these Gemaras. And I'm not sure of the exact number, but I know that new people, new people is right now as we speak, 1,050 new people. 1,050. Now, as you saw, he's also sponsoring all these, this, this entire list, whatever that was. Uh, you know, there's, and these are the new names that I didn't mention. So there's hundreds of guys from the Shear that brought in friends and he's sponsoring hundreds more Gemarts. Okay, so I asked you to get him good and you got him good. So Baruch Hashem, I'm very excited about that. I think he's also excited, I'm sorry. It's Lid Nishmas' his son. His son was a young guy when he was Nifter and he was very into Masechus Rosh Hashanah. Whoever wants to jump on the bandwagon and sponsor less Masechta was Mered Nakash. He sponsored Masechta's, what comes before Beitza? No, 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 sorry, he sponsored Beitza. He sponsored Mary Nakash sponsored Beitza. Official sponsoring Rosh Hashanah. 
And that's what the guys on Zoom see. You see that picture over there? Oh, now it's normal. He's just trying out stuff. He's pulling him back in. He's like, hi, Gershon. Do you have that video from Art Scroll? You want to show here? Show the video from Art Scroll. No, not the socks. Not the socks at all. Uh, here. Here, put it on loud if we can hear the speaker. No. It's Kishmak, it's Kishmak, it's Kishmak, it's Kishmak, it's Kishmak. Oh! How many days are we out here? Gershon is tired. No? You got something for me? Meanwhile, this is in the art school factory. That's how many Gemaras are going out in the mail that day. All these Gemaras. It's Kishmak. Check it out, my boy Sai. What's your question? No, it's the guy in Archco recorded it. Well, thanks for asking. Uh, Rabbi Sai, again, I want to just say the guys that sponsor Gemaras, we're still looking for a little bit of sponsorship. Stephen Barak, 18 Gemaras. And NL Quality Travel, 80 Gemaras they sponsored. So Yishkoyach, thank you. Bosnach. Uh, is that it? Yeah, so our boy say, if you haven't brought a friend and you want to get these Gemaras, now's the last chance to hop around and get fishel even more. So you know how to do it. There's the status, there's the phone call, there's different things. Get your friends. Did you get a friend, Nachman? That's why you're not going to get Gemara. Howard called Nunu. What Nunu? <laughs> Nunu? I want one. You want one, Avi? Do you want one? Would you? The seminary girls don't count. Can't just bring. Is he coming? So you get a Gemara? Okay, wait till he comes. Okay, wait till he comes. I'll tell them and ask to give me one. No? It's, no, it's exclusive to us. They have no right to give anybody anything. It's us. You're not getting one. Our scroll, do not give him one. I know they watch. Four guys in there watch. Do not give him one. They already gave me all your books. Fine. I don't know if we should read any emails today. What? We should learn Torah. Okay, we're going to read an email. Howard Kovacs, wrong thing to tell me. Mazel tov to you for bringing us to the global scene of Sechus Beitza. It's his fault. If you don't like emails, Mendy just caused me to read it. And usually, it's the seat. That's the hot seat. It's usually Yaakov. It's whoever sits there. It's not, it's not even you. It's the seat is Garim. From the names you've been raiding off, I'm excited to see some of my friends and family have joined the MDY family and become recruiters for the global MDY family. As you can see by the attached picture, my Shas set is in work in progress. He, he, he showed me a picture of him building up his Shas from where he started with us. Even though I started with you in Brachas, I wasn't sure I was going to stick around, so I borrowed a Gemara from the Kalim nearby. I did the same for Shabbat. Time we arrived at Erevin, you instilled in me a love for Gemara that I've never had before. Your investment in your charge and knowledge of each page have helped me tremendously to better understand what you are teaching. I'm, I'm at best and I'm a Aretz in learning. Oh, somebody just asked me, why do I say I'm a Aretz? He's, he's new to the thing. He said, I'm sure there's some, some, something behind it. Well, we'll have, to, we'll have to talk about it a different time. Well, when I was in Chicago, I was giving shit for eight years. And I used to use a Gemara with Nekudis, which I still use till this very day. You know why? Because when I read from my Siddur, my Siddur has Nekudis, my Mishnah Brewer has Nekudis, and my Chumash has Nekudis. So I figured my Gemara should also have Nekudis. I like it, and that's the way it is. This guy walks over to me, not from my shear, and he says, listen. Bishloim, if you're not Maritz, I understand why you have Nekudos. But you're not Amaritz. You're Talmud Chachams. So from that day on, I call, he's such an Amaretz, he doesn't even know how to say Amaretz, he calls it Amaretz, and he calls me an Amaretz. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's this world. The guy like him, Taka needs a Gemara with Nikudas. And from that day on, it's called Amaretz, not Amaretz. And you have raised, uh, barely a Benini for Shlemy Klein. And you have raised up my desire to learn Gemara on a daily basis. Yesterday, whoever wasn't here, Shlemy Klein gifted me a license plate from New York that says MDY on it. Beautiful. We're looking for more from different cities, different states. The Rebbe Shalom should bless you with the best of health. Nachas from all your children. Oh man, that's the best bracha. And success in Ruchnis and Gashis. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hilo Kovacs of Kochav Yaakov. P.S. 
The best advertisement for learning Torah comes from polka dot sacks. I heard, I got, we, we received an email from somebody that was very upset that they put that out there. I just heard about it after Shir yesterday. I spoke about it yesterday. It wasn't Leruchi. I didn't give the okay, but I take whatever Nassan al Gans gives us. And he did a phenomenal job. So maybe he made a mistake, one or two over there, and we go right there. He did a great job. Okay. We are holding, today is the final, final daf. And we are holding by the Mishnah. On the bottom of the Flamites, Omid Beis. The official Mishnah sponsored by five official, the official Mishnah. Rufu Shlam for Braina Basienta Dvaira. Says the Mishnah, Mi Shahoyu Peroisov. I should pull this out over here. Oh, this is a good email. I'll have to be a different time. And in case I printed this out, in case anybody's wondering, if you do bring, if you're part of the shear and you bring somebody in to the shear, sorry, you can win this. It's the MDY tour. Two tickets to to stroll, and you get to spend two days with Nachman Seltzer. It, it started out one day, you didn't like that, so I made it to two. It says, oh, it says dinner, sorry, dinner, dinner, dinner. And, 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 you, get, and you get to hang out with, with Avi Kamiansky. As a, it says over here, I'm not joking. What does it say mm-hmm. here? I don't know. It says it. It does say it. I'm not joking. Here, Zoom court with Avi K. It does say it here. It's Mefurish. He doesn't know about it, but it just happened. You get to hang out with Mendy. Mendy's going to take you to the Kailo and he's going to, whatever. He's going to take you around to the, to, where, to the Shiva that he teaches and everything else. Because it's a whole day. Akiva Solve is going to take you to the school. It's a whole. <laughs> It's, it's a big, big matzav. And you can also win a shas. And if you live in Eritrea, you don't want the tickets, you don't want the whole thing, you don't want to hang out with Nakam Seltzer, and I don't blame you, you can take $5,000 in cash. Fine. Says the Mishnah. If we said that your items, whatever you own, the tchum goes by you, the owner. So the owner dictates where your items should be. So now let's say you have a bunch of fruit in another city. Who made the Erev? The other guys made the Erev, not the owner of the fruit. The fruit goes by the owner. Someone else doesn't have the right to make a Tchum Erev for somebody else. So here's the picture. The Perois are in this blue box. This is where the owner of the fruit resides. And his Erev goes, let's say, up to this line because he has 2,000 Amis in each direction. These guys, if they want, they could put the Erev right here on the red line. And therefore, they shift over their residence to the red line. And then they'll have 2,000 Amis from the red line to him. And they could bring the Paris. Theoretically, they could. But it's also because the Tchum goes by this guy, not by this guy. Vimei Rav, of Kamoyu. However, if he made an Erev, here, he shifted over, instead of living over here in the purple circle box, he shifted his residence to the red line. He placed his Erev right over here, as you can see, in this circle. Now his Tchum is the green box. He can go 2,000 Amis in each direction of the green box. So he can retrieve his fruit. Top of Daf Mem. Oh, I forgot to mention, right now we got a live stream in Chicago, Baruch Hashem, Doilem got together, people that are not used to going out and hanging out with Doilem. How you doing Chicagoans? We'll see you soon. All right, keep it up. Let me guess. I'm going to guess that my partner, Bensi Friedman, is not part of the Chabura. Is he in that picture? Tell me. He's not there. Yeah, of course not. He's very busy now. All right, he promised me he will be. I'm just guessing. Huh? Call him out. You got to call him out. He learns it off every single day. Calling him out. Misha's even at Slayarchim. And my stepbrother's probably also not there. I'm also guessing. The guys are really close to me. Huh? You're not my stepbrother. You're my brother, Yosef. Misha's even at Slayarchim. All right. So you. And now, however. Mm, okay. So if, let's just go back to this case for a second. If he makes, this guy that's in the purple makes an Erev over here, he could get it, but they could also bring it to him. Fine. 
A person invites guests, and the guests, they live very far away, they have to make an Eruv Tchumen. Now, this, you probably know, if you know me, this is one of my pet peeves, I have many. Well, I used to make, I used to give a shear Thursday night in my house, and, right, so it was Barachas, there was, uh, sometimes we had sushi, and schnitzel, and, and kugels, and every time we had chond, and it was Givaldi. But one thing I couldn't stand is when people walked out of my house with trays of food. <laughs> Tray, literally. And it's a thing here in Israel, unfortunately. It bothers me. I see kids walking out of a kiddush with a whole plate of cake. They're going home to bring the. What are you doing? In America, you take a napkin, something, you put one cake in, you want to give your wife something. No. It's a whole, all my chocolates. The best was, I, the best, my son, there was a few good ones. One, they, one guy took my raw meat. Took my raw meat home so he could grill it at a different time. We'll freeze it and I'll grill it at a different time. That was mamish, and it was meat from Chicago, it was Romanian, okay. But one guy walks into my house and he sees a freshly baked cake in the cellular tape with the bow and everything. So he figured, okay, it's for the shear. Now the shear is in a different room. So he opens up the thing and he takes a, now that my wife made that cake for a neighbor, Shalom Zachar. Uh, the shear was almost over then. It was almost over. She walked in, she couldn't believe it. Fine. People would go into the cabinets, take stuff out. I mean, like jars of chocolate syrup, maple syrup. Like. Open house. Open house. <laughs> what? It's a problem. Why is it a problem? No, it, it is a problem. It is a problem. It's not a right. It's a thing here in Israel, no? Unfortunately, it's one of the things. In my house. Okay, they felt so Hamish. It was like a... <laughs> hint, hint. Do not take any uncooked meat. You want to take a bunch of steaks home and this and that that are cooked? Fine. Uh, sushi. We had sushi. I'm not. A guy went home with like 50, 60 pieces of sushi. Like Rabbi said, we need it for the seum here. It's, it's, what are you doing? It's like, oh, you chapped me. That was just the. Okay, anyway. So if you have a bunch of guests, they should not take home food. You see, it's a Mufurish Mishnah. Because once again, who owns the food? The Balabais owns the food. Maybe we should close that window, please. Because of the, the, the sawing outside. Okay. Um, yeah, that one too. Shkoyach. The, the one that owns the food is the balabayas, and the tchum of that food goes by him and not by the people eating it. So the people that start eating it, they don't have the right. It's a way to stop the pet peeves. Now they can't take the food home. It's mamish, it's a gevaldi gezach. But there's a way out of it. The way out of it is... You are mezaka them the food before Yontif. Here's the picture from Yoni. I'm going to miss Yoni for the next Mesech. He doesn't have it, unfortunately. This is a shliach. I mean, he's making this guy a shliach. This guy's a shliach. He's not the guest. The guest is this guy. He has a white hat. So you give, you're the balabais, you give the wine, the bread to this guy. He's zoycha. Zoycha ladam shloi befanov. He'll be zoycha for this guy. And now on Yontif, it becomes, it's his. He can move it out of there, out of the tchum. Yeah. What? No, no, because once the, the second yantav comes in, that's when we decide whose tchum it is. And that second, if it's the balabais, it's too late, you can't change it anymore in yantav. So all this has to be done before yantav. Ella imkain zika lohem. Monoseim me'erev yontif. Itmar. Hamafkid peyrois eitzel chaveroi. You, what's the what's a good lush in here for mafkid? There's um, there's a pazit, but also there's a, a guy watching the the fruit. What do we call him? How do you say a shimer in English? Guardian. Guardian is a great lush. Okay. So you have the depositor and the guardian. Itmar, hamafkid peyrois eitzel chaveroi. A person deposits fruit by the guardian. Rav Omar, now the question is, who's, who's, who's tchum is it? Is it the guy receiving the guardian or is the guy depositing? Who's, whose fruit is it considered right now? Rav Omar karagli mishif kiduloi. It goes by the guardian. Ushmul Omar kiragli hamafkid. It goes by the depositor. Says the Gemara, what's the machloikis? Leima Rav Ushmuel the Ozl Tamayu. Perhaps we can make a connection between Tchum and Ezekin. The Snan, in Hichnes, it says over there, I think in Baba Kama, 
right? By the way, I'm remembering now, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I believe when we were learning Baba Kama, maybe even more recent, there was a whole Nidain, in the Achrayim at least, and I discussed it in Shir, but I have no recollection who, what, where. I'm just remembering now, so maybe somebody can help me out. If you're at a wedding, and you're eating food at a wedding, could you pick up the piece of chicken and give it to a woman and be Mekadashir? Whose chicken is it? So some say it only becomes your chicken. Since you're a guest, it only becomes your chicken when you put it in your mouth. Some say when you put it on your plate. <laughs> that works for your wife. Usually it doesn't work for others. No, Dr. Factor said, chew it, spit it out, and give it to her. Oh, Chicago, Rabbi Sai, wow, Shalom Aleichem Chicagoans. Wow. And they even have a sign on the wall, I love it. MDY, the guy with the hat is blocking the sign, but it's okay. Oh, Yoel Bergman, right in the screen, unbelievable. Okay. Zog to Gemara. Uh, no, that's uh, I, I have no. I've never been to that place. Something Ashkenaz. It's on uh, Lincoln Avenue, I think. Maybe they go Lusitosom. The Snan. How much? Two hundred and forty people live now. Beautiful. Two hundred and forty people live. Give The Snan. If you deposit your animal into somebody's backyard, and he agrees to it. He's okay with it. You bring a wild dog, you have a nice German Shepherd, you put it in his backyard. What happens? Who's responsible for the dog? The Chachamim say, since you allowed him, you didn't say anything, you were okay with him putting the dog in there, it's your responsibility. The dog now goes out and is mazik, it's your responsibility. No, L'chaira, it's the same thing with us. If you're the, the, the guardian, it's like it's your fruit, and Mamela, the Tchum should go by you. That, that's, that's one side. Rabbi Yoimer, he has to say specifically, I accept upon myself to watch your dog, and until he says that, he's not Chayiv and Shmiro. And this is what's interesting. Rav himself, we're discussing Rav now. Rav says that the fruit go by the guardian. And Rav over here in Ezekiel says, halacha The halacha is like that the owner of the backyard, he's responsible for the animal. So the owner of the house, that, the backyard that contains the fruit, should be responsible for the fruit as well. And therefore, the tchum should go by the fruit. By the owner of the fruit, by the guardian. And Shmuel, on the other hand, says, the halacha is like Rebbe. That it doesn't go by the owner of the backyard, it goes by the owner of the dog. So therefore it should go by the, by the depositor of the fruit and not by the owner of the house, the guardian. And once again, here you see the skill, this idea of differentiating between two different halachas. You think that Nazikin is similar to Tchum, and I'm going to explain to you why they might be different. I know the Amri Afilul Rebbe. It doesn't mean it is different. It could be dif- different, and then you don't have, you're not forced into saying that they're the same. Just because I allow you to, oh, talking about a dog, Yishkoyach, the wrong Kormluth, for taking the Kelevra. He thinks it's a Kelevra. Hey, uh, Mando, Mando, the Enikal. He took him for Shabbos, and I forgot to pick him up last night after Sheer. So the dog is remaining by his house. Yes, I saw, I saw the text. So Yishkoyach, thank you for keeping him all the way to Monday because obviously you can't have him around during the Siyam. He just barks. He's, he's this small, but he barks like a... He has a, he's a big bark. He's behaving? Everything's okay? He's giving you nachas? He has this a fancy personality. What does that mean? Extrovert. He's extrovert. <laughs> <laughs> they all have this fancy personality, and there's three people in this room that have the same exact dog, right? Where's Donnie? He wants to shoot himself. Does he have a what kind of personality does he have? Okay, get rid of it. Yeah, I'm asking. Fine, next. Rebbe, it's a mamish, it fools you. It's like a little tiny thing, it looks so cute, this, that, and then you get him a shemirachim. Don't ever get it. That's, the Gemara knows what it's talking about. Don't bring a dog into your house. 
Atkan loy kol my Rebbe also melad v'stabal loy kavel loy teruso. Why would I accept the pond? You put your dog in my backyard. Also, I didn't say anything. Fine. I also don't say when you come and use my swing set, whatever. But I'm not being a kabel shmira. Avalacha a kabel alei niturusa. But over here with the fruit, he accepted upon himself shmira. Therefore, it should be different. The depositor wants the owner of the backyard to take care of his ox, to take care of his bad dog. He's going away. He needs somebody to take care of it. He doesn't want to be responsible for any damage that the, the animal causes. Over here we're talking about fruit. And the owner of the fruit wants to move the fruit wherever he needs it. He doesn't want to limit it to the tchum of the owner of the, of the yard. He doesn't want to give him full responsibility on the fruit because he wants to be able to eat the fruit of Yantif. And therefore it's very different the tchum and the zikin. Tanan. Can we prove it perhaps from our Mishnah? Vim erav hu peroys of kamayu. So it's the second part of the Mishnah. Last line on Ahmed Bez. and says, if the owner of the fruit, what happened? We had a person, let's go back. Here's the guy that owns the fruit, and his fruit are far away from him, over here. If he doesn't make an Erov to bridge the gap, then he cannot use the fruit. Even if these people do have an Erov bridging the gap, he, and they bring it to him, he can't use the fruit. Why? Because his fruit cannot move. His fruit is stuck right in his box. Why? Because his fruit go after him, Bosar, his Erov, and his Erov is up to this red line. Therefore, anything he owns cannot move at all. But if he made an Erov, in other words, he shifted his residence with his Chala. He became a resident of this line right over here. So now he could move this way and this way, 2,000 amas in each direction of the circle. And Meila, he could use it. So what do you see? Vimeirav, who perez But who's watching his fruit? The people in the blue box are watching his fruit. Isn't that the same case that we're talking about? He deposited his fruit in the blue box. So the tchum should be, according to you, according to Rav, the tchum should be based on whoever owns this blue box. How could all of a sudden he remove the fruit from this blue box and say, oh, it goes by my Erev. It doesn't go by his Erev. It goes by whoever is watching the fruit. And if you say that it goes, like Rav, that it goes by the, the guardian, not by the depositor, so what difference does it make that, that the depositor made an Erev? It doesn't go by the depositor at all. It goes by the guardian. Perhaps talking about a case where he got a special spot in the house, a little corner, and they told him here, that's yours to deposit the fruit. Memela, it's his. It's not, we don't, in this blue box, there's a little corner here somewhere that's, Given to him, it's like he rented a spot in here. So it's really owned by the purple guy, not by the blue guy. Okay. Yichilai Karen Zavas. Toshma. So we have a kasha now in Rav from our mission. Misha Zimin Etzli Archim. The final case. The top line on this Ahmed. If you invited guests, lo yiluchu biyadam manois, they cannot remove food from his kiddush. Elohim Kain, Zikulem, Manuseim, Ereviantiv, unless he gave it to them and said, This is yours, Ereviantiv. Viamris, Karagli, Mishif, Kidet, Sloi. But let's think about it. Where's this food? The food is by the guy making the Kiddush. So it should be his Tchum. Who cares that he was Mizaka them the food before Yantiv? Okay, let's say he took a guy and he said, You should be a Shliach. I'm giving you a, all the Ragalach. You do like this, you make a Kenyan, all the chocolate or whatever, the, the uncooked steaks. You go like this, and you, you zoich it for the guy that's going to come on Shabbos. He's going to walk very far. But right now, until the guest comes, who's watching it? The owner. So he's a guardian. According to Rav, it goes by the tchum of the guardian, not the depositor. So what's the difference? Since he did he go through this whole extra step. That's very similar to giving a guy a corner in the house and saying, here, that's yours. He gave it to, to Ruven, the shliach, and the, that shliach, it's as if it's in his rishos for the guest that didn't come yet. And some say, 
that when you're mezakeh, you go through this whole thing. Why do you go through this whole thing? On purpose, that this shouldn't, it sh- you shouldn't be using my tchum. You should be using your tchum. So you uprooted my tchum and you gave the tchum to that guy. Why? How do, how do you know? Because you went through this whole trouble. You had to call your friend up and say, get over here. I need to be mezakeh, use some food. Why? In order not to use my tchum and Shabbos, to use your tchum and Shabbos. And yonte. Give me that, give me that. Fine. Rav Chana says the Gemara story. Rav Chana bar Chaniloi tola bisra beibro didasha. If you're from Chicago, the guys in Chicago watching live, they all know what I'm talking about. Chicago is a very special place, but they pride themselves in shallots and in Romanian. Get that off the screen quickly. What are you talking? There's 75 people there. Not one, two, three, four, fifteen. 15. Arab Zaman Tversky is there, Givaldik. Okay, Givaldik, you guys. All right, I, I see some people messing it. Okay, good. They're gonna get it. Where's Lewis calling me? He, he said he's coming, Lewis. Hi, hey. Okay, well, next team, next team, in 30 days, Vez Hashem. No, because I promised, I said it's gonna be double. Not only is it not double, trunk by five people. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> you should have said he called them all this morning. I did a great job. They all said they're coming. Now I was wondering why they didn't come. You called them. Oh, forget it. Right. You're bothering them. Okay. The very, so Chicago is very sensitive. Anyway, they have, what do they have, Avi? They have shallots and what else? Romanian. Romanian. And when, anytime you go into somebody's house there, they have a Romanian salami hanging from the kitchen cabinet. Oh, and that's the thing. Dr. Epstein, shake his head. Yeah, yeah. So they all hang their meat. You go into the bedroom, they have meat hanging on the door. <laughs> Wherever you go, they have meat. I'm from Chicago, Romania. Well, you don't know Romania. What else do you have there? We have a restaurant that's open until 6 o'clock in the, in the evening. It's unbelievable, our place. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And we used to know they closed down already. Okay. Ken's Diner. Ken's Diner. It's, it's closing. I, I think whatever. That's what he said. Ken's Diner. Great Chicago. Fine. Oh, Vitas. They have a Vitas, of course. The Vitas. He's not watching. It's UI, so it's fine. Fine. So it says again, this is what happened. Rav Chana Bachaniloi, he's a guest, and they gave him a beautiful piece of meat. Tala Bisra Bibi the Dasha, and the meat is hanging on the door. Also, coming to Ravuna. Now he shows up to Ravuna. He has the cash of Chana. Omelay, what should I do? Can I use this meat or not? So Rav Huna tells him, If you yourself hung this meat, great, it's yours. But if they hung it for you, you can't take the meat. Says How could he take this meat home, right? He's going back through the Tchum. He made Erev Tchumim. He wants to schlep the meat that he got as a, as, received as a gift. He wants, now whose meat is it? Is it similar to our sugya That you have fruit, that is being watched by a, gu- a guardian, the owner of this house that Rav Chana is in, or no, it goes by the guy that owns the meat, which is Rav Chana. See, there are people that go through Shas and they, know, they remember these lines, like my Chavrus and my father. You ask them, who's, they know everything. Rav Huna was a Talmud of Rav. Why? Because in Gemara Beit Zedaf Mem, it says, uh, and Rav Huna was a friend of this, and in this, and Meila, they make the whole Cheshmer, because you have to, Okay, so let's remember this one forever. Rav Uno was a Talmud of Rav. Vama Rav, and what does Hava, and what does Rav say? Kiragli Mishiv Kidetzlai. So shouldn't it be in the Tchum? How could Rav Chana walk home with his meat? It's the guardian's Tchum, not the depositor's Tchum. Shani Ibrid Adash, the door, the Kimishi Yichlo Karen Zavzdami. He had his own little corner in the house. They allowed him to hang the meat there, so it's his meat. It's not the guardian's meat. Omalei Rav Hillel, Le Rav Ashi. So a number of questions here. If they hang the, the meat on the door, he's not permitted to take the meat. I'm not going to tell you what that means. What? If they, they hung it. If you have an axe, that you, you fatten the axe. And you're ready to sell it to anybody, they'll come along on Yantif. So we said the ox could go to anybody's tchum. And what's the pshat? Remember the Ran says pshat, that it's as if he's mafkarit. 
You're taking it from Hefker? It goes by anybody. So how come over here that they hung the salami on the door, they certainly gave it to Rav Chana, so he should for sure be able to take the salami home. Oh, my Rav, I'm ask you another question. And if they hung the salami on the door, the halacha is, he cannot take it home. We had the other day that if there's one shepherd in the city, only one guy. So we know that if you buy an animal, you have nothing to eat. What are you going to do with a cow? You don't know what to do with a cow. You must give it to the babysitter of the city. And there's only one. So you could give it to him even on Yantif. And the tchum goes by the babysitter, by the roya, by the shepherd. So certainly, again, Rav Chana over here, it should go, he's the, he's the babysitter of the salami, he's the only one in town, he's, it was his gift, it should go by him, and not, who cares that they hung the salami, it should go by him, he should be able to take it home. Hello, says the Gemara, Shani Rav Chana Bar Chani Lai, the Gavr Rabahu Utorid Bishmaitei. This is an amazing Yisai, Rabbi I skipped, what I skipped? Oh, they've got another question, the third question. Again, why, if they hang it up on the door, he cannot take it home? Would he not have been permitted? I don't care about your art scroll. We're reading it the right way now. But not a baby, I can't grab it by him. Leave it alone. You're not going to be with Sosia. He's not going to be with What do you mean he's not going? Let's go. What do you want? Three times in a row. No, no, say no. He says it. Those who don't would he not have been permitted to take it home? He would have been permitted to take it home. He say he wouldn't have been. He w- wouldn't he not have been permitted? He would have been permitted. Okay. To take it home. We just learned that if somebody else hangs the salami in the door, you're not allowed to take it home. Ask the Gemara, but he should. Why? No, the same thing. We're saying the same thing. So they gave him a gift. It's not like they hung it on the door. If they hung it on the door, you're right. But they gave him a gift. So your animal, your kalim, your salami goes by you, not by the guy in the house. And Mimele, you should be able to take it home. Since he's such a chash of a person, he's busy thinking and learning. And therefore what? So we're going to see and this is the pshat. If you yourself hung it, so you know what the meat looks like. We're talking about, says the Gemara, a problem of meat that you don't see, you don't, you're not watching it for a few moments. There's a possibility that, and the Gemara says there's a story once that it happened, a raven came, grabbed the meat, and brought it somewhere else, and they switch, it switched up with another meat. So if you see this meat and you know what it looks like. It looks like this. It's this shape, this size. Da-da. So it's not a problem. You hung up the meat so you know what it is. Then you can take it off the door and eat it. But if they hung it, you're busy learning. You're going to forget. So I want to tell you like this. There's many stories. The, 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 the kunst is to find one Rav that they didn't say the story about. Every Rav. If it's your Rav Shach. Rav Shach, he needed, they had to do a procedure, and they didn't, and he was too old to get the uh, anesthesia. So he started, he thought in learning, and they did it, he didn't realize. And then the Lubavitcher say, it happened with the Lubavitcher Rebbe. And, and uh, I don't know if they say it, I'm just saying. Everybody says it happened to their Rebbe, and fine. And I heard a funny story. I don't know if it's covered even to say the story, but it, that's what they say. They say the Rebbe Eger, they brought him to a museum, and they showed him, they, they gave him special permission to sit on, a, on the chair of the king. So he sat down on the chair and he wouldn't get off. So after a few minutes, he said, what's going on? So he said, oh, I thought the, the bringing the baby soon. He thought, <laughs> <laughs> Kids, sir. The, yes, sir, Shlomo knows what I'm talking about. My father, I grew up with this. He's, he's always thinking and learning. And I know this for a fact. He's constantly thinking and learning. Whenever, he, whenever he's, 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 he looks like he's spacing out, he's looking forward in the middle of the Suda. He's like this, and then you, you say what? And he says, yeah, but it'll start talking to you in the middle of whatever he's thinking about in the, in the sugya. But Rabbi Isai, I want to announce something very, very important. I need your help. We've been trying this for the last month and a half, and I wanted to introduce this to the Eilam today, but because of Yontif, I really fell off the bandwagon. So I want to get back on the bandwagon. And this is, 
this is going to be revolutionary for Daf Yomi. So I'm just asking Doylem here and Doylem that's listening before we really introduce it to the world because this is a game changer. In Ger, they do something similar and we want to do this for us and we tried it in the Koyal. It works like a bomb. Ger Hasidim. There's hundreds of Ger Hasidim that know Shaz Balpeh. And why? Because they have a very, very simple way of doing Chazara. And if we do Chazara like this, it's easy. The way it works is you take the daf and you break it down to the maskanas of the daf. So instead of going the back and forth, all three caches over here, they'll say if a guy is very into learning, let's say, and he's thinking, then he has to make sure that he hangs the meat that it's not bashas and it's not, and that just that takes the whole sugi that we just did in, in in just one or two lines. The bottom line is once you know the daf balpe, that could take 10, 15 minutes. You hear, Levi? I want you to join us. We need a bunch of guys here. We're going to do it with Chos or Lezeich Nishma's official son, Mesechus Rosh Hashanah. Imagine if you know Mesechus Rosh Hashanah, Balpeh, inside out, backside, forwards. And it's very doable. I'm going to make it easy for everybody. One of the things is that you take the daf and you break it down and you take the maskanas. I'll do the maskanas for everybody. I'll do the sikum. I'll write it down. I'll make the video, the eight minute daf video. will be shorter with, with, in writing, in Hebrew, in English. It will we'll be easy. The only thing you have to do is Chazra that. That takes, let's say, 10, 10 minutes. But once you do that Chazara, you could do Chazars of an entire daf in less than two minutes. And why am I saying it over here? Because I was thinking to myself, I'm not a Tana and a Moira, but I was doing these Chazars. I, I did, you know, 10 daf like that, and it was, ma- was Chazars Hashat, just waiting for the Chazan in, in dead spots. And this, I thought in my head, 16 daf of Gemara and Rosh Hashanah. 16 daf. Anybody could do it. Because it's two minutes now, it's only 32, what a, 32 minutes of Chazara, and nobody needs to know that you're learning. You just look ahead and it flies. It's mamish easy. And eventually you don't have to do Chazaras like that. The guys in the Koyal are doing it. And, and the last test they did on the 30 daf, they didn't have to do Chazara. Usually they, they cram and they're doing Chazara. And they just knew it. And they all got 90s. It, it worked, right? Levi, come here. Tell, tell Dailam. Come here. I didn't, we didn't prepare this. Laibi is in the Koilol, and he does the Mizuman, and we're going to call it something else. Does it work? Yeah. You like it? It's mamish, it's kishmak, it changes, it's a game changer. All the Amaratzim, all the people that are learning Daf Yomi, I call them Amaratzim, it's Tamil Ram, they'll be thinking and learning. Mam, you just say, okay, what's Daf Beis? Boom. In your head. Daf Gimel. It's a two minute Chazar, and you just you repeat it once in a while, and it comes back. So I'm like, should we do the Mishnah? We'll start it tonight. I didn't want to be here, but okay. You see, even one Ahmed, no matter what, we finish a little bit after 8 o'clock. Rabbi Yisai, Mazel Tov. Everybody, please go to the Siyumim in your cities. It's a tremendous physic for you, for the whole Olam, and us here in Ramah Have a wonderful day.